Okay. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to uh, hold off on questions until, until certain segments. Uh, and if anyone has anything, um, you know, just jot it down and then I can see if I can get back to it at that time. But, but I definitely want to answer questions at the end. My name is uh, Brian Morgan. I'm your Navica representative uh, for, for, uh, with systems engineering and of course, Navica MLS. Uh, and I was in your area, I guess the end of last year and did a little bit of a demonstration, but I've got another opportunity to do it. While uh, I wanted to be there in person, unfortunately I had an accident with my five-year-old son and I've torn my rotator cuff. So I thought it would be a bad idea to get on a plane and try to travel there until they figure out the extent of what's going on with it. But I think this Zoom should go well, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen uh, with with uh, my PowerPoint presentation. Then I'm going to get into the live system. And again, guys, just jot down your questions that you have for me, and I'll, and I'll go from there. Okay. You need to turn it up. I don't know. Yeah, can you hear me okay? We're working on it. Yeah, probably just the TV remote for Samsung. Okay. Well, you have to say something for us to know what's working. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Everybody's got to do something. I can't. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound? Is it any better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's better. Okay, so here we go. First of all, again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. My name is Brian Morgan. I'm your account rep with uh, SEI and Navica. And I'm going to go through a couple of slides here. And we really appreciate your business over the years. You guys have been, us, been with us for quite some time. And there are a few quick facts on our system. Just some quick highlight points that really makes us who we are. And the, like, the one I'd like to talk about the, the most here is our customer support. I know that we really stand out in, in helping the members when you call in or if you chat with us through our online chat, or of course you email us uh, through uh, our support email. I know we're always really quick to, to, to get back to you and hopefully uh, our, um, our reputation holds up and everyone here has had a good experience with our MLS support once you call in, of course, if you have any questions. We have helped a lot over the years with uh, with RISO compliance, it's a compliance, you know, NAR is, is putting forward to get data uh, in certain, um, get, get data aligned with other MLS's data across the country. It's called RISO. Of course, we've done that. We provide office and agent websites and, and then your board website is included with, with SEI and Navica as well. And then here's a quick slide from one of our customers, just a testimonial. This is one of the AEs from South Central Association of Virginia. And, you know, a, a lot of our customers, of course, have a, a a lot of things to um, to a lot of uh, good things to say about us. Continuing on here, uh, I'd like to talk quickly before I go into our buyer gateway. I'm going to actually open up our live system and show you a little bit about what's going on there. So here I'm I'm logged into to Rockport, and I'd like to let you guys know we have made some changes. As I mentioned the end of last year to the system itself. Can everybody can everybody see the system? Yes. Okay, perfect. So first and foremost, we've made the workspace bigger for you guys. Uh, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here real quickly. Uh, uh, Sarah and and Carrie, I have people trying to get into the room. Is this the only people that are supposed to be in the meeting? Okay, Carrie, no. They want to get in. Yeah. You're allowing them to join. Okay, just making sure I'm gonna admit these folks. Give me one minute. Okay, they should all be coming in. So here's the, the dashboard of our system. You'll notice that it's a pretty big change uh, that you saw with the old system, but I'd like to talk to you a little bit about these pods right here. All the pods are interchangeable and you can edit which pod you used simply by clicking edit your dashboard pods and you can drag and drop pods over that you use pods that you use the most can be front and foremost and then again pods that you don't use or never use at all you can remove from it and that creates more uh, desktop workspace for you on your actual mls system you'll notice you have your market activity your border association calendar that's where you can get on and you can register for events and classes and that kind of thing if they're set up that way and it's all uh, force and uh, first and foremost on your mind there with all your pods so we've gone to great lengths to make it a little bit easier as far as that's concerned. You have your super search bar here at the top. 
And this is where you can actually enter your MLS number, a street number, or anything in between, and it should should populate. And I've got one here. It's 21 Bahama. And I've just typed this in, and then all that's all I have to type. And you'll notice right from this super search, I can click on it and go directly to that listing. And it will populate. So it should it should actually let you populate by street address, by um, zip code. Uh, it may be, uh, it may be, uh, let me admit one more. We got, I'm so, I apologize, people. We have some people coming in late to the, the show here. So I'm just letting them in. So it'll populate by a number of different aspects, aspects, your subdivision and that kind of thing. So that's really good to very, be able to quickly access your listings through this quick search bar at the top. We've also revamped your, your roster up here. You'll notice you can actually search for members in your MLS. You can search by last name, first name, or a wild card, and then you can actually see that member's listings as well and get all of their contact information. On to the pods. I've noticed you I told you you actually can move these around, and I, I mentioned briefly on the calendar as well. This calendar lets there's different security levels, so you can actually have brokers leave messages to your agents, as well as uh, the, the MLS can leave direct messages to its members in uh, you know, upcoming events on that calendar, and they are color-coded as well. So quickly here, I'm going to run into a full search. I'm going to go into our demo system, flip over, talk about this fairly quickly. So search listings, I know that a, a lot of folks, this may seem, you know, very routine, so to speak. You know, we're getting, we're searching listings in MLS, but there are some pretty neat features that are allowed here. Underneath all of your actual property types, it will save every last search that you did. So you can simply click that, run the last search, and it will let you run any of those that you've run, and it will timestamp them to let you know when you've run them so you can quickly run them again. And then, of course, you've got all your different property types over here that are customized to your MLS. And I'm going to get into the customization part of it a little bit later in the show because that is important for your, for your particular area. Now, when you run a search, I'm just going to do a last search that I've run, and I can run this here. For those that didn't know, what it's going to allow you to do is you can actually come up here, and it's populated. You've got Quite a number of listings here because I ran a, I ran a very broad search. That's one of 272 listings that match that criteria. I didn't really narrow it down that much. But for those that didn't know, you've actually has a, have a reorder button up here. And if you're going to email these listings to a customer or a client, and let's say you have eight listings, you can go into the reorder button, move these up and down of which one you think they may, may like best, and you can actually reorder those and email them directly to customers or clients in the order that you prefer. So if, if you did not know that exists, that is, that's a great thing. You can also save any listings. So if you come over here and you want to save all those listings, we now have unlimited carts. So you can call a cart like Morgan Save Listings, and you can take all seven listings and dump them into that cart. And uh, those can also be available to your buyers through the gateway that I'll talk about here in a minute. So uh, there is a, a in-depth buyer gateway that's available uh, through our system and if you've got buyers out there and they're going to zillow or going to realtor.com and other areas on the internet you actually have the ability in your prospecting tools to create a a a gateway for your buyers to go into that gives them a direct connection to the mls system so instead of them getting maybe data that may be outdated or not correct through zillow or other areas you have a, they have a direct link in the mls and they can search it also supplies them a username and password to do so and i'll show some some um some uh, updates uh, of that here and some screenshots of that here in a moment but i want to go back to your bahama way for those who do not know this we actually have an in-depth tax information Let's see if this pulls up Bahama. We actually have an in-depth in tax information that is available through the um, through the MLS itself. There it is. And then when you when you actually when you actually click on the listing itself and you've navigated to the particular listing, it will uh, it will let you go to the actual tax information for that listing. But not only will it do that, it will allow you to to essentially perform all different types of functions with that listing. So let me just run this over here. Search button, let's do a last search. Let's run this. 
And you'll notice right here, you have all of your quick icons. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover these very quickly, probably from right to left, because there was a question asked about, about uh, flood zone or FEMA zone floodplain mapping that, that, I, that I received. And that is something that, that we can do. We can add flood zone mapping uh, to, the, to the map layers for you guys, but that is FEMA mapping when you do that because that's public domain. And if you've ever seen the disclosures that you have throughout the MLS, you know, the information is deemed reliable but not guaranteed, that's exactly what a FEMA flood zone map would be because a lot of times um, I've heard other realtors say throughout the entire country that those maps might not be correctly on, on par with what's going on with the flood zone. So we have integrated with a company called, if you click on the little water droplet, it's called My Flood Status. Now, these reports, you do have to pay for them, but it's a full determination report, and it allows you to actually get in and view and, and create a full determination report that's actually insured as well for a particular property. So my flood status will allow you to create a flood determination report. You can purchase one at a discounted rate, and then you've got some information you know that's absolutely correct, and it's, uh, it's such good information. They, they insure it for, I believe, up to a million dollars per report. So that icon is right here throughout your system. So anytime you need to utilize that and, and actually pour it into their system, you can do that. We actually have a listing notifications icon. It's a little red bell. For those who have not used this, it's you can click on this beside each listing and it will pull it up. And right there, you'll notice you can sign yourself up for any text message or email notifications the second anything happens with a particular listing. If there's a price reduction, a price increase, if the status of the listing changes from, you know, from, um, from active to under contract or pending, you can get text notifications immediately for that particular listing if anything changes with it. So that is our listing notifications button. You'll notice the little red bell right there. Also, you have a recent comparable sales. This is new. You'll notice uh, right, right here, if I click on this, it will take the, the listings that I have. I've got quite a few of them and it will instantly add zero results because I have too many listings there. But what it will do is it will, if you have three or four properties, it will instantly perform a quick comparable. So therefore you, and then you'll notice you can edit the comparables right up there as well. So if you have, uh, if you click on a, uh, a recent comparable search, once you're in it and you have your 10 or so listings, you can go in here and make adjustments to those comparables and then you can rerun the search in order to find those. Okay, back to the back to the the main search results page. Continuing on with our smart icons, we offer also have a new flyer option that is available, and it lets you create. If you have not used this, you can create the template, the format. You can actually upload uh, listings. You can change the fonts and the font colors and create your own nice flyers right from the flyer design, and that's all done again from the smart icons. And then of course we also have your uh, tax your tax data uh, right here. And that's gonna allow, I've got a print off of this. So we we actually sub uh, uh, subcontract our tax data out to another company who uses, believe it or not, AI, artificial intelligence to go in and scour the internet and, and find different areas and different sources for tax data. But what they look for is on the tax data, I've got a list here, it's you know property address, you know, land use, property descriptions, assessments, legal information, owner information, uh, postal information, uh, structure totals, structure valuations, and then partial information. You also have demographics that you can pull a lot of times if it's available, census information, congressional districts, county information, uh, and so on, school districts, secondary, primary schools, and so on and so forth. So that is available right here. And when you hover over these icons, again, you'll see tax info. It does pop up and let you know what is available. So for those who did not know that was there, that was, I think that was added maybe about six months ago. And that information can port right over through the MLS system and uh, have you able to, to view it right there inside the MLS. So I really do like talking about that because that is a newer feature. Again, in the last six months, some people did not know it existed. That's why I like to like to cover these things. You can also write from the, the search results. You can select three listings here. 
and you can go up and you can start your CMA from the results. So if you didn't know you could do that, you could take your results, your subject property, you could put them, input them, and then start the CMA right from there. Or you can start from scratch a brand new CMA or a quick CMA from a radius map search. So you can pinpoint a location, you can go out one mile, five miles, 10 miles, whatever it may be, and start the CMA that way. That's a new introduction we've had in the last um, year or so to be able to go in and do that. With the actual listings themselves, we now have a newer display. We've really tried hard to get these all to print on one page. We can set up displays. If you guys have issues with them going on two pages, I know it's an issue. Pretty much in any MLS, keeping all the information on one page, we can help adjust some displays to do that. But our new MLS display takes up, again, more landscape, fits more into one page, and it is right there. That's what a new, of course, new display looks like. And then right from these displays, you can email, of course, your particular listings. So continuing on here, I, I know a big a big part of this is your is your mobile app. And I'm going to actually open it. We still have people coming in, by the way, so I'm still letting some folks in. For those of you who didn't know it, I do like to cover. I'm going to get rid of this over here. Over here. I, I do like to. I do like to I cover, like to cover our our MLS support. Okay. I got somebody here. Me. For those who didn't know and have never used it, you've got your chat button up here in the upper right. This is where the chat feature is always available. You can, you cannot, um, I'm in the demo system. I'm not logged in as a user. That's why I did that. But you can actually get to a chat team member instantaneously if you have any questions throughout normal business hours and you can um, ask any questions right then and there. So if you've not used our chat before, if you've called in or if you've used our email support, if you want to uh, try that out, that's a great resource to have throughout our system to go in and you're immediately able to talk to a representative and, and, and get that support going as quickly as possible. Okay. So I'm going to open it up. This again, this was a live system. Uh, I've talked about the pods on the home page. I'm going to move this down over here. I'm going to migrate back to the home page here. There are a couple of uh, other things I'd like to hit on, but I'm going to go through the PowerPoint first. I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to see if there are any specific questions on the couple of things I've talked about so far. None. Okay. So I'm going to continue on and pull up very quickly our my PowerPoint presentation. Here we go. Brian. I yes. Uh, you mentioned the flood map cost. Do you know what that cost is? Uh, yeah, that, if we get it, see, FEMA offers those flood maps. A lot of times those flood zones, the mapping to overlay them on are free from FEMA. But we've got to go in there and, and and do the overlay, and I the cost would not it wouldn't be significant to get that done. Um, just normally it's a setup fee, but we can talk to you guys about that too. There's there's some there's some wiggle room to get for us to go in there and do that. Okay. And, and what that yeah and what that would allow you to do just like with any of the other layers once you've got the map pulled up. Let's see if I can go back here real quickly. Give me one moment. Let me see if I can pull this listing up and then I'm gonna, there it is. So what it allows you to do is if you actually go to the search itself, it, it will allow you to um, select, it, it has different selections. So you've got demographics, you've got different things that are available for that particular listing. And so right here, let me, let me see about the tax data on there see if this pulls up here. Here we go. So right now, this is the tax data I've pulled up for 21 Bahama. It may, this may be somebody's listing because I'm in your system right now. But you can scroll down, but 
on the overlay, you'll notice it right here. It's just like this view. So you can you can switch it over to your aerial view. You can zoom in on Bahama Drive. And the overlay, there would be a button over here that does say, you know, flood zone mapping, and it would overlay that map on top of this one. Again, I, I, that's something we can do, but it's one of those things we've got to post disclaimers all over because it's just not deemed reliable like other sources are. But we can certainly, that is something that's doable. Brian, uh, yes. sorry, that's not one of the right address. That's the Allegro. And the, the 21 Bahamas, it's own subdivision. Maybe it's not. Is it the same one? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's not. Yeah. Is that what it is? Probably. Right. Like oh. And hey, Brian, that was a yeah. great explanation of how you can do that. Uh, going back, you had mentioned that the flood, the current option we have is to go in and, and get the insured flood map. What you said it's at a cost. It is. It's it's twenty dollars a report, and it's at a discounted rate, and it's insured up to a million dollars. And this is a very we do not have any hand in this. This is a company that many realtors came to us over the years, and they asked for our um our support in integrating with this company. And let me see if I can click here uh, and show you. Let me. I, th I think I've got. An example of a report. This may be one here. That's a, that's a CMA. I know I've got an example of a report that actually I could show you, and I would I could email that over. But uh, was that Sarah? Yeah, that's me. So, yeah, Sarah. Go ahead. Uh, the the next the, the only other question at this point that I would have is. Um, just to clarify, so you said lots of realtors came to you and they asked you to add that function on there. This circumstance, we find that we need something else. Is it just that easy for us to say the membership needs this on there? Can we add it? Typically, is that something you guys can do if it's within your within your you know possibility? I mean, that putting it in there either third party or just having a click through getting us to where we need to go. Yes, that, that absolutely is. As a matter of fact, you'd, you'd sent me a, a question about the security protocol program. It was, um, I, uh, who was the name of that? It was Forewarn. Uh, for, forewarn. Yes. So if Forewarn actually has a, and the most of them do, if they have an integration or a single sign on, that is something we do integrate with. We integrate with many, many companies to actually get that done. So yes, we absolutely answer your question. We absolutely can do that. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to find one of the flood zone reports to, just to show you what it looks like. But unfortunately, I can't see it. I can't find it right now. But I can, I can uh, in check data management. Yeah, I, I will. I can send you, uh, Sarah, an example of the flood determination report if, if that's needed. That's not a problem. Yeah, we can so, do that. Okay. So con continuing on here with PowerPoint. Brian, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, go ahead. So you, you referred to, to the tax where it goes to our uh, taxing system, to our local. So if we put in, say, it's San Patricio or a different tax ID number, is there a way to get that link, that blue hyperlink to, to act better? Um, because right now, I think we only have it to ATAD. So if we're outside of our county, then we, we don't get directions properly. So is that just a back end where we can talk about that and fix that? It, it, it is. And if you still use, do you still use the link out to ACAD? Yes, all, all the time. Okay, and, and that we can, but it directly depends on that, if it's working on the tax assess, assessor side. You guys have the appraisal district there, right? That's correct. Yes, so it depends on their system. If their system still supports it, we can certainly do it. That's not a problem. Okay, it should, because the other MLS, their hyperlink do go to the impact Yeah, you're asking if we can do it? Yes. Yes, absolutely. 
Absolutely. We just need to, we need to know specifics about the tax appraisers district, and then we need to actually talk to their assessor's office, but that, that is something we do all the time. Okay. Okay. So to continue on from the current slide, let me just talk very quickly about our buyer gateway. These are all functions, by the way, folks, that you have in your current system. I'm not talking about anything that you, that you could have or you might have. These are all currently in your system and you can utilize them. Again, if you have any questions when you get back to the office about how to utilize them, you can use our chat feature. You can even, you can even give Sarah to give, give you my email address. I'd be happy to help you with it. Uh, I'll give all, the, all this information at the end. Our buyer gateway, you can actually go into your prospects of the MLS system and set up. You take a buyer's email address that you're working with. You, you input in the system, you, you set them up with a password, you click create, it then emails login credentials to the buyers that you're currently working with, your potential prospects and, and leads you're currently working with, and it allows them a very up-to-date, the most up-to-date search of your area. So it's a, it's a private portal. They can go in, they can look at homes, they can save homes, they can uh, save searches, and it captures all that information for you to have sole access for on your desktop. Okay, we have something very similar for your, your mobile device as well called your client app, but this is for your desktop users. So they would go in through this portal. And again, this is the information. Your information, these aren't great screenshots, but all of your company logo, your contact information, everything shows up right here. Okay, it's all branded with your information. On top of a buyer gateway, you also need some sort of a, a seller gateway for your sellers to go in and they can see upcoming showings, they can see feedback for past showings and everything in between, how many views they've got in the MLS. You can go in for your sellers. Again, you create them this private portal through the seller gateway. They can view all the information right through through their website, past showings, uh, different feedback. So this really helps cut down on the amount of phone calls you get from your sellers that are saying, how did that showing go that ended 20 minutes ago? Uh, that kind of thing. It's all electronically documented right there in, into that that seller's account. Ryan, where did you get that? Because there's a lot of us that have never seen that. Can you show us how you got that a little further? I, I, I am, and it's actually a very good question. It's actually right here. It's in your within your Navica showing manager. So to have a seller gateway where you're working with your <laughs> sellers, it. Stop! 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 Okay. Wait, we, there's I think 90 percent, 95 percent, maybe 99 percent of them doesn't know that we have showing managers. Can you tell us? That is. Yes, showing manager, um, a lot of, first of all, a, a lot of other areas, um, the, the showing manager, uh, they, their whole companies out there, you may have heard of um, showing time, or um, th there are lots of different companies out there that do showing managers, but what this allows you to do in the MLS system, it's not designed to take away from how you're doing business now. So if you could, Sarah, how do you do a showing now? Does does the does the showing agent just call the listing agent? Yes. So so we're back back up. So is this in Navica? Is this an yeah. app? app? Yes. Yes. It's both. It's both. Where so can you go back to the home screen of Navica real quick and just show us where this app may be? We are not. Nobody's using, using it. No, no one no. is using this like at all. <laughs> okay so so with with your showings what you're allowed to do is you're you're allowed to actually go in and it can work a number of it can work a number of different ways uh the first way it works is you can actually if you're more of an independent broker and you run your own brokerage and have two or three agents with you you can utilize it solely uh, yourself. You can approve and accept your own showings, that kind of thing. The other way it would work is that um, if you have a larger office. So with the office, um, let's say there are 10 or 12 agents within an office, you can go in and you can select uh, a, a uh, office secretary or an office personnel to manage all the showings for that particular office. So when a showing request comes in, they can then dump it off to the homeowner, and then the homeowner can respond via text message or email uh, if the house is available to be shown, and yes, come on in, we can show it today at 12, that kind of thing. It's all electronically done. So, 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all, and it's, and it's, and again, there are other companies out here to do this, like Showing Time does it. The main difference is our, our, our system, it electronically documents all the showing. So let me take you back here. So there, there it is right there. And I'm logged in as, I, I apologize. Let me come, let me come back here. Let me see. Oh, if, right. If you're on your phone and you're doing it, you have to push the three little bars in the top left. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the, what I want to tell you right here is that this was not designed to get rid of the way you do showings now. Let me pull up the um, the actual system itself. Go back to my PowerPoint. So from Sorry from, to keep sorry. interrupting you, but just to kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but exactly. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on here, and it's, there's so much in an MLS system, folks. I hear it all the time. Like, we didn't even know we had that. It's because there's you try to put so much into it, and it's just, you know, MLS systems are for input and output, and that's what you use 90% of the time. And the other 10% of the time, you can use the extra functions. But if you'll notice right here, uh, if I go... Let me click here. And again, I'm in this demo system, so I don't know if there are any showings that are set up. But if I come to a, uh, let me go in here and search for listings. And then I'll run a last search again. And I did not talk about this. I did not talk about this earlier, but because these were all of your smart icons. See, I was talking about all your smart icons. Well, it's right there. Request a showing for that listing. A big old blue button. <laughs> yeah, a big, a big old. And notice, notice if it's, notice if it's your listing too. You can enter, you can edit that individual listing if it's your listing from anywhere in the system. We allow that as well. But you click request a showing. Now, this can also be done in your app. You can, if you have your app up and running, you can request a showing right from the app. But once you click on it, of course, it comes up. And I'm not, again, in a live system, so it's not going to work. They don't have any showing set up here. But if you clicked on it in your system, it would allow you. Let me go back here to this um, PowerPoint. I'm going to show you. So right there, you've got schedule showing. You clicked on it, and it's going to instantly pull up all member of all the, MLS, uh, the members of your MLS. So let's say that Rick called me and said, Brian, I want to see your listing on uh, 21 Bahama Avenue today at 12. I say, sure, Rick, go see it. I then go into the system. I select Rick's going to show my listing this Sunday at 12, and I click request showing. It then automatically sends an, uh, will send an email to and a text message to the, the homeowner, allowing them to approve the showing. Once they click why on their text and approve the showing, it instantly gets put in motion within, within the MLS system for the showing to occur. Now you have utilized the system, even though he hasn't requested it from the MLS, you've gone in there and electronically documented that Rick's showing your home today at 12. After that happens, Rick will then get an email for 15 days in a row and a big nasty banner across the top of his MLS that's red that is asking him to leave feedback. It takes two, 10 seconds to leave feedback for that showing. And once they get in there and do it, here's how the feedback looks. They can click on the radio dials, select that they're very interested. They can leave additional comments, save it. Not only is that information available to the listing agent instantaneously, but it can also be made available to the homeowner through the seller gateway instantaneously. So again, it really... It, it gripes, gripe is the best word I can use. It gripes on the, the, sh the, the showing agent to get in there and leave this feedback as quickly as possible after showings already occur. And then it's, again, it's all electronically documented. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Did I have a question? Yeah. No, no, okay. So the showing manager also works through the app. And I'm going to get into this app here in a minute. I know it's a pretty big deal. So you've got you've got the app here. It's, you you just search Navica in the app or the Android store. You can download it. And you'll notice right there you've got show and request. You can go to a listing that's showing in the app. You can click it. You select the date and time, and it's then all instantaneously documented through the showing manager. And it will send out emails to the to the principal broker and text messages if you need it to the broker and to the to the listing agent. And also text messages to the seller all right then and there to, to approve this showing. 
So that's the, the showing manager aspect. There are many reports that are available. There are many, many aspects of the showing manager I've not discussed. You can have blackout dates, reoccurring blackout dates at the home can never be shown on Sunday for religious reasons, things like that. You can go in and you can edit. If there's a, 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 a security keypad in the, is, is located in the garage and not in the foyer, you can put that in there. The security codes, a lockbox location, it can all be entered into the showing manager to have access uh, securely through the MLS system between listing agent and showing agents. Okay. So you also, in the app, you again, you go into the Google Play Store or the Apple uh, App Store, and you search for Navica. We've got the, the, the one of the only five-star apps that you'll see out there, right there for agents, and you can download it. And this is the home screen of the app right here when you log into it. If you've not used this or if you're using the web app or a web version of it, I highly recommend you go into the App Store and download this one and use this one instead. You, you'll notice your InstaView right here. If you InstaView is if you have your app out and you're sitting in front of a for, uh, home with a for sale sign, you can pull out your phone, you can click InstaView, and the listing will automatically populate and go right to that full data sheet of that home you are sitting next to geographically. So it uses the GPS on your phone to do that. It's a very quick way to pull listing data. You also, of course, have a, a custom hot sheet that you can run over here with your hot sheet button. You've got all the main ways to search for listings on your app, the map, the advanced full data sheet search, your MLS search, and then just like in the MLS system, your recent searches. You have in the app a fully constantly updated list of your MLS members. If you have a new MLS um, a participant that's joined and they want to show your property, you don't know who Aaron Irons is, you can get into the MLS member, click in Aaron, Aaron Irons populates it shows you what office he's in it lets you text him and call him right from the app itself once you're on and you pull up a listing inside the app you'll go to what's called the expanded display or the full display of that app and you'll notice the contact agent button is always right there at your fingertip below you can click that it pulls up judy young's the contact agent you can do a showing request request showing you can send a text message or call judy Oh, and even go to her website, her personal website, all right there from the phone. Your full, as cumbersome as this sounds, I know most people use the full MLS system for this, but you can do a full data sheet search on the app. You'll notice right there, you can even, in the middle menu, you can even hammer down to garage type, high school district, middle school, you know, style of the home, uh, waterfront, yes or no, and you can do all those and really narrow down the search through drop down menus or just enter an MLS number here on the right to search for a listing. That's all done again from your fingertips on the app. The map search uses Google mapping and this allows you to take your finger, rotate it around Cypress Creek or wherever you may be, ocean front, and then it will color code the push pins. Green are for active, orange is under contract, you know, red are sold listings and it will color code those listings on the actual push pins themselves through the map and you can filter those results right from the map as well. Expanded display of the listing. If you if you <laughs> rotate your photo, your phone horizontal, a lot of people don't even realize this. If you're looking at a listing and turn your phone sideways, it lets you see a nice expanded view of the home and nice, very large high definition photographs. That's really convenient. If you're with your customers or clients driving around in a car, you can show them nice full display images of, of each listing and swipe through all photos. Keep in mind, in Navica, you can have 99 photographs per listing, up to 99. So you, 75. Are, you guys, are you guys set at 75? No, that's what Raymond at Navica told me was 75 per listing. It is, and that's all we're allowed to put in. Did you, you guys might be set at that. Do you need more? We need 99. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's something I'll talk to you guys about. If that's that's a that's a tweak, so to speak. So just just let us know about that. Sir, I can get with you after the presentation, talk to you about these. So be sure to jot these down. I'll jot it down. Okay. So going through 75 photos. Going through this. As far as the um the expanded display is concerned, you can also email listings right from the app to your uh, customers or clients. 
And then you've also, just like in the MLS system, you can adjust your comparables. So you can run comparables right here and you can set that. Since you guys are in a tight knit area, it would really help to, to hone this distance down to maybe one mile, two miles, that kind of thing. If you're a more rural area, you'd want to span that out to 10 miles plus. So that's where you can set all your comparable information right there. It is adjustable. Share your listings. Go goes without saying, share your listings right from the app, right to Facebook, right to YouTube, all the major social networks. You can do it from the app. You folks also have what's called the Navica Client app. This is the same thing as the buyer gateway, except it is an app version of it. It allows you to upload your company logo right there. You can select your color scheme. Right there, I found a Mr. Morgan Associates. We use red, dark red, and black as a color scheme. And you can brand an app right to you to share with any of the customers or clients out there that you're currently working with. You can bump it to them. If you're standing next to them, you can send it to them in a text message. Say, hey, don't, don't use you know um, the corporate site or don't use Zillow. Go to my personal app here. And, uh, and, and it's been branded with your information. And it's also puts you in direct contact in cahoots. I like that we use that word, puts you in cahoots with what they are doing. So right there, you'll notice you have a new lead from the app. It's then got you connected. You can see right here, you can see their favorites. You can see listings they might like and listings they've deleted. And you can email new listings. And this is bi-directional. So you can save listings you think your client may like, and they can approve them or deny them. And then they can save listings that they like, and you can see what they're liking out there. So it's a bi-directional app that puts you in direct uh, communication with them. And it will send you right here. This is called a push notification. It sends you push notifications and reminders. If you're busy and go back and see it as a reminder of what they are doing within the app, listings they've liked, and, and everything in between. So it constantly keeps you in communication. This app, you'll notice here in Navica, I'm back in Navica, Brian Morgan as a prospect it is directly synced. So a lot of folks say, is it synced with Navica? Is it, does, it, does it talk back and forth? And it does. So you'll know if this prospect in Navica, if you've given them an app, so you can go home on a Sunday and see, am I working with anyone that doesn't have the app? And then you're like, oh yeah, Brian Morgan, I didn't give him the app. I'll go and create him one and it'll automatically email and text message him all the details to download, install the app and get you connected. That's all done through Navica. Navica next. Sarah, you had questions about this earlier. We integrate with almost anybody. So lockbox integration, super century lock, you know, forms. I know you, Texas uh, Realtors did use zip forms for a while. I think they dissolved that relationship. But, uh, you know, forms integrations, my flood status, you have that. Uh, virtual tours. So you have uh, property panorama free virtual tours. Every time you input a new listing into the MLS now, if you click on your virtual tours button of your listing, you'll notice a free virtual tour that has already been created and can be shared with anybody out there. Okay. You need help getting to that virtual tour. Again, send me an email, use our chat uh, on the upper right, and we'll show you how to access that and how you can share it to other places like your Facebook wall, your business page, uh, LinkedIn, uh, anywhere these virtual tours can be shared. New security options, um, that is for MLS only uh, users really, or excuse me, um, if you've got uh, MLS of choice, uh, people coming in from other areas that allows, it sort of locks down the, the system uh, for security reasons and allows it to be a little harder to access. Data validation, that's also available through the board level where we can help kick out bad data that's inputted. And then shared reciprocal MLS, I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a minute. And then CRS, if you guys are ever interested in more of a full-fledged tax system, we integrate with them directly as well. Oh, so that's it. I'm going to uh, open it up to, to any questions. I've covered a lot. I know there, there could be a lot more. Any questions about the showing, let's start with the showing manager and the app. Um, you kind of blew our noggin, so we're going to have to like go into some deep dive on that maybe at another time that we'll, we'll do a class or something. Um, you and I can, yeah, we'll figure that out. Yes, and we have full virtual trainings and we come to on-site training and you guys get that with your MLS contract. Sarah, so we actually come to your area and we can do full on-site training. 
But what's even more popular than that is what we're doing right now. It's called virtual virtual training, and uh, and and we can set up different uh, subjects. So if we have a training on CMAs, how to create a CMA, a training on our showing manager, how to set up your listings to be shown through the system. But right now, everybody can go back to their system. And they can, if they want to try out the showing manager and they want to, they know they're going to show a listing or if they've shown one in the past, they can click on that and you can go in and set that up and it will automatically put again, a, it'll send the feedback request to the showing agent. And when that showing agent logs into the system, it puts a big red banner across their MLS that says, don't forget to leave feedback for this listing. They click on it, leave it, and it's instantly forwarded to the listing agent. Brian, I have a, a question. Yes. On the, you know, on the realtor.com and, and the truly et cetera, uh, do you like when you put a, a listing in option or something like that, it drops out of that, whereas the core logic stays in until it's closed. So, is there any improvement? Yeah, that, that that's actually not an MLS issue. That's a Realtor.com preference. Does that does that make sense? Well, no, because they um, they pull from the corpus and the pendings and options stay in there, but in our listings and navigate, they drop out. Yeah, and and that is. That is something that's decided at the MLS level, and if that needs to be changed, that can be changed. The answer, that's, the short, that's the short answer. I could go into a lot of detail about that, but the short answer is that can be changed. Okay. And then one other question, since I'm not really a computer person, um, whereas we're looking at the matrix or core logic, what platform are y'all? I mean, like, It's not matrix or core logic. I mean, because I don't yeah, know. It has, yeah, the Navico, but is it a what kind of program? Someone told me, well, it's a DOS program. I don't know what it is. No, 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 no. It's, it's .NET based. Everything is .NET. We use the most advanced. We have the most. Actually, we house all of our servers on the East Coast in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they're, they're backed up off site. So a lot of these other companies, they have Amazon or Google host their data. And they say, here's all, here's our entire program. And they use the Google cloud servers. We house it all on site. We we do all of thing, everything, keep your data secure on site and back it up offline. And .NET is our programming structure. So since you've 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 uh you've you've brought that up, let me bring up one thing here. I think we've got some flyers and information. Does everybody does everybody see this? Yeah. Okay. So let me go to view and go to uh, full screen. Okay. So this is just a quick flyer I gave to everyone. Everyone should have it there. Advantages to running and maintaining your own MLS. And this is a big thing right now because I've told you about all the technology that's involved with your own MLS. But your MLS essentially is the lifeblood of the Rockport Association of Realtors. It's, you know, you guys kind of revolve around, you have your membership with your board and you, you, you get membership to your MLS system. And it really creates um, solidarity uh, b between um, uh, the, 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 the members and, uh, you know, extras that are included with being a member of that particular board or association. So just going through this list, you'll notice some of the advantages are, is that you have your own MLS system. And what I mean by that, is in, it's it's very easy to to say hey we're just going to merge boards or associations but the the nuts and bolts of it, the reality is is you guys have right now have full control over your own MLS if you need an area like second row from the beach or third avenue or this subdivision or that added we've done something recently with Sarah where Sarah needed something done and and um, Carrie needed something done and we we're in, instantly able to get that input and in, input into your MLS. If you're not running, maintain your own MLS, you're kind of at the subject of, of what they do and how they do it. So it's not so transparent about how your MLS can be run, what fields of information you need. It all, it, it, you, you don't run your own MLS, so you can't make the own decisions for your own MLS, if that makes sense. 
and that is that's a big thing because we customize property types, we customize format editions, we custom everything in your MLS is customized right to your area. Okay, and you, you, okay, your board directors, your MLS committee, you have say so with exactly what happens in your system and when it happens. Okay, at all times, you call us. We help you with it. We work you work through if any issues. If someone needs to, put, if we need to put a um, a data validation and somebody's putting you know sold price and putting the wrong sold price and putting zero or something like that, we have ways to help police that and make it better simply by contacting us directly. Okay. Whereas if you join a bigger MLS or a bigger association, you know you don't have as much say so. You you may have to go through a board of governors. Uh, to, of their MLS to actually make changes to that actual MLS, and they may decide to do it or not to do it, just depending. And um, it kind of kind of goes out of your hands at, at that at that point. Also, right here, uh, when you join another border MLS, just keep in mind you're subject to all their fines, rules, and regulations. So right now, you guys, Rockport Association, have your set rules and regulations and your fines are in place when you join another board if you don't have a picture uploaded within you know 12 hours of a new listing then they may take it out of the mls and send you a big fine in the mail you just don't know you don't know how they operate um so that is something to keep in mind is to get a grasp on you know those types of things in their mls and and how it would affect you directly the 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 example I just gave by no mean is an example of another area. It's just the best the best way I can explain it because there was a big group uh, in Eastern Virginia, is Richmond, Virginia, and the uh, Williamsburg. Uh, this happened about three years ago. Williamsburg and Newport News all joined in with Richmond. It lasted for one year because there was so much nickeling and diming that all the major brokers in Williamsburg, Virginia, Newport News went back and said, we're pulling all of our information back out. We're restarting all of our old MLS and we're, we're, we're not gonna be subject to any of this anymore because th they just did not like the way things were being run and the fines they were, be they were getting and things like that. So that was a big story. It's been about three years since that happened, but but it happened right before COVID. So that was that was a big a big story uh, d during, during its heyday, so to speak. With Navica though, uh, you've got data sharing capability. And I'm gonna flip over to this slide very quickly. Okay. So on the data sharing capability, that is where we can take information from, here we go, this your right MLS. That's where we can take information from another MLS vendor. And we can do what's called a single sign-on. And it will actually compile uh, information into the system. So if in, in sign-on information into each system. So if you're inside Navica and you want to get inside another MLS, let's say it's Matrix or you know Paragon or CoreLogic, whoever it may be, there's they can provide a single sign-on so you can search their information and they can search your information. But you're not merging your MLS system. We have just rolled out a brand new system that is called your Navica SSO or your single sign-on reciprocal system. And if if the parties all use, let's say there are three or four different areas that use Navica, not only can you search, but you can cross search all the areas. So it, you can search for one, let's say price range, and it will subcategorize into the MLS and let you scroll through a list, they'll say, these are the houses in this price range in this MLS, here are the houses in this price range in that MLS. And sub, you can actually search, cross search, all the MLSs in one area. As far as I know, we're the only MLS system that can provide that at this point. And that's, again, with Navica reciprocal data sharing. So that has done a whole lot. And NAR is actually pushing this. They brought it up at the national convention when we were out there and saying, okay, you know, we've consolidated MLSs, we've done this, now we want to rotate back and push back and say, these, because of RISO and getting all the data to look the same, we want to get these, the sharing up and running between different MLSs they're gonna, that are going to um, remain up and going. So that certainly is something that we can do, is offer that data sharing. Now, the trick is, is the other party, the other area, they have to say, well, that's great news, 
that's what we're trying to accomplish here is share data. We want to do that with Rock Force Association Realtors so we can all be uh, on the same page with the data. And we want to share our data with a single sign-on. They can share their data and we're good to go. Um, there is no need to have to merge MLSs with this type of technology in place. You can keep the solidarity of your own MLS, your own association realtors in place and still have all the functionality of searching all the areas with this technology. And right here, you'll notice unique system is designed specifically for you, by you, your property formats, your input fields. I mentioned that earlier, but I can't stress that enough. Um, when you went to, if you were to merge with a different MLS, all this would look essentially different because it's not tailored to exactly your area and your needs. And then we also allow users, uh, the MLS choice, that's kind of old news. You can ha now have members come in and the whole brokerage doesn't have to join your MLS, just individual agents can join up. That's your NAR's membership of choice. Okay. And then the last thing I like to mention here that I also like to talk about is there are big advantages to having your own board and your own association. You know, it, the question I kick back a lot of times is, you know, the question is why shouldn't we regionalize or merge with another board? And the question I kind of throw back is why, why do you want to have your own association? Why do you want to have your own MLS and have control over it? And when I, when I ask those questions, it's because there are a lot of different things that the local association can do, fundraising, giving back to the community, um, you know, local charities and events that their local board association always does to help give back to your local community. So that's a, that's a strong selling point to be able to keep your own association board up and running. Okay, so that being said, are there any, here's the reciprocal SSO. I brought this up just, just one second ago, and this is how it would look. And it's constant live data. Again, other areas can do this. Other areas with Navica, you can search information, you can share information back and forth. This technology is available uh, between MLSs and is something that we can, we can certainly do. Is that, so, just, is, is that just between Navica systems? That they, we can do both. That's a very good question. So if you, if, uh, and we, we keep on saying matrix or core logic. So I want to, I, I want to compare apples to apples. It's not matrix and core logic. It's the South Texas MLS. So it, you would, you know, it would be up to the South Texas MLS to want to do, uh, provide a partnership with the Rockport Association of Realtors to be able to sign into their system back and forth and have it be bi-directional for the South Texas MLS members could join in and look at listings in Navica. And then you guys, the Rockport Association could, could log in to, to Matrix and not input listing data, but just search listings in their area. It will be up to the South Texas MLS to allow that and, and to kind of, both parties have to allow it, but it would be up to them to say, yes, we want to do this because this is the ultimate goal here is to, 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 to get the data out there and shared and reciprocated. And so, yes, this it's available between, you know, the South Texas MLS and the Rockport Association, and, and it's available between Navica systems. You, you name it, we can do it. Has Navica done that for logic or matrix anything? I'd have to look. I know we've done it with Paragon and FBS, but we have no issue doing it with Matrix. Well, Brian, I the, have... the, the only the only drawback to that, and the reason the reason some people don't do it is because sometimes with bigger MLS, so we don't do this, but sometimes there can be quite a substantial charge to the MLS for a vendor doing that for them. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. I okay. Have that. Is that that couldn't be shared data? Couldn't be done because of the different types. I don't know if that's true. I'd like to have some information. Yeah, no, it's that no. we can access everything in South Texas if they agree to that. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay, now I, you're breaking up a little bit. You're asking if you share with them. Uh, yeah, the uh, uh, data sharing that you're talking about. Yeah, it's a de well, it's actually called re reciprocal SSO up here. It's a reciprocal yeah. single sign on. Right. And you're saying that in that case, that 
South Texas, you could do that and get all information from South Texas. Now, they said that that can't be done because of the domestic platform. So I want to be sure I understand that. Yeah. The, that, that question. That yeah, there's, the, they're not, uh, they're not, they're, they're talking about apples and oranges. They're talking about merging database information, raw data into one database. Yeah. And that, that's how they're thinking of it. This is not that at all. This is called a single sign-on where you have a button in your MLS system that could say search South Texas MLS. It logs you into matrix automatically and lets you search through their system. That's how the that's how the reciprocal SSO would work. There are many areas doing it too. This is not this is nothing. This has been people have been doing this in real estate for the last five eight years. It's 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 a it's a it's a, it's a nice thing to have in place. Right. Just like, just like, yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. Now now here's where it gets a little more detailed. So you also have to have compensation agreements in place because right now if you're a member of South Texas MLS and a member of Rockport Association, they could have different compensation agreements. And someone that came in from South Texas and sold a Rockport home doesn't have to fall under the same rules because they're not a technically a member of your board or association. So you have to have a simple compensation agreement that says the South Texas MLS participants and the Rockport Area Association of Realtors agree to abide by each other's compensation. That's all you've got to have in place, and then you're off to the races. I think if you're a member of us, you have the same compensation. Right? Yeah, but but you've got to have it in writing because of the lawyers. You know, you've you got to have it on writing. How many uh, Navita systems are in our area other than Rock? How many other organizations do you have? Uh, okay, so let, let me show you right here. Uh, if you go to USA mls.net you click on texas and those are all the boards and associations we service in texas okay. <coughs> so so that being said you guys can certainly look at this and and um and, and talk about sharing uh it is a big deal and, and again it is something you know, we would have no problem doing with the South Texas MLS, um, no issues at all. Uh, we just, you know, they would they would have to be on board with it, and then we could get the the wheels in motion to get that reciprocal sharing up and going. So, I've talked about the the features, the newer features in the Africa. I've talked about the showing manager. I've talked about the app. Uh, you know, the the, the um, the only other thing I did want to bring up, um, of course, is we also have an association management system that you guys have where you can register for classes and CE classes and make payments and all that online. But that's more for Carrie. I can talk to her about that at a later point. I know she uses that currently. So that is all intertwined directly with Navica. So it's not only an MLS system, but it's an association management system as well. And that helps manage the entire association. So that, that being said, I've, I've covered a whole lot here and I've talked about the reciprocal, the reciprocal sharing. Um, there are a couple questions here for Navica. Um, do, uh, Sarah, would you like me to answer these? Well, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get real quick. Yeah, any more questions? We did the nuts and bolts of the number of the number one and number two. So we're gonna, we have to explore both policy agreements, obviously. So if, if the transfer, uh, if the membership vote says we want to go to Matrix, we need to know um, as far as the transfer from Navica to Matrix, is that proprietary? Are they going to have to manually input everything? Is that information passed over to them? How does that handle from Navica? It, it, it really depends on the South Texas MLS and what they agree to do. I do know that MLS vendors charge a lot. They can charge a lot of money to input that data. Uh, sometimes it's in the ballpark of ten, fifteen, even twenty thousand dollars. You guys don't just say here you go. Like, do you do you provide them with that information? To we them? provide them with a number of data cuts. There is a cost per data cut uh, for each one because they've got to get the data 
cor they get it once to put it in, and then they've got to refresh it with the most current data because you guys have been inputting new listings and timestamps and property uh, status changes have been happening, and then they've got to imp input it with the newest data before the switchover. Um, and and that you know that's another thing th that I would ask is you know what data is going because you guys have prospects, you have listing data and sold data. We have comp data going back from 2006 in your system. And that data, they are not going to, I can almost 100% tell you, uh, putting in comp data that goes back to 2006 into their system, that's just, that's too much. That's just not going to be feasible. So comp data and, and active listing data and all of that would have to be, uh, you know, inputted into their system. So uh, do you guys have any idea how they're going to do that? Uh, yeah, yeah, they have people that are active on the keyboard to be trained for that. But for the past seven years is what I heard. I'll, you know, firm that up this afternoon. But what I, what I didn't understand is, uh, yeah, from the time for the all the previous, you charge to release that data. Is, is that right? Yes, we do, but it's a very reasonable fee. I think it's $550 a cut of data and then we provide an entire roadmap but but they but see there's you don't need a cut of data if i, I you said they're going to manually input the data uh yes but and it's not any charge for that but but the data that they get from uh from you i what i don't understand charge for the cut what is that what is the well, cut? If, if, well, if they're manually inputting it, then there's no need for, a, 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 they're not going to use the data anyway because they want to manually input it. No. So, so the cut of data, just to let you know, if they were to take a cut of data, it includes your prospects, all your listing history, all the, the comp, the, the sold data, all the active data. No. Okay, okay. let's go. But I would be weary uh, just to get, because you you guys have been our customers for a long time. Uh, we want to see what, whatever decision you make, we want to see you guys be successful. We want your business, but I've, I've got to tell you, I, I'm kind of uneasy about the internet manually part. That doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies. I, that, that is a, that's a kind of, a, I, I would ask more questions for sure. I'm not being rude. Can I speak up real fast? Someone yes. think about this, okay, with our uh, WPI, we talk to those people, they're so far behind because they're trying to send to them manually. Now, we have to you know, to go online by ourselves to find information because they have not input it manually by them there. So, what I'm saying is all these years, they're never going to be successful. They're going to lose a lot. So, we, we have now, we have so much background, so much history. There's no way in 25 years that someone's going to manually input. We're going to lose everything we have here. Oh, okay, okay, guys, uh, we're not, oh, that, we cannot yeah, do that this no, time. No, no, that's no, not this yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, let's, let, yeah, and I, and I, and that, that is, my, I, again, our, we want to see you guys succeed, whether you use Navica or not. That's why we keep our customer base for so long. That's the big, the big thing here is, is, you know, and we get a lot of our customers back that leave because they say hey, the grass was not greener on the other side of the ranch, you know, fence. So the, the, the long story short, I would ask serious questions about that. As far as the data is concerned, um, it, you know, the, the manually entering it, it's it's not going to go that far back, especially with comp data. And um, it, it, the, 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 there have been associations that, I've seen go down this road before, and it 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 just it turn it 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 just does not work. It's it becomes, for lack of a better term, it becomes a nightmare. Trying to get the data in, and then it, it turns into we'll have this done in two months, six months, then a year goes by. It's just a it's a really really big deal. The way the best way to do it is for them to take a data dump from us and to have the South Texas MLS merge it into their system. Uh, you know, you use the word uh, DOS, someone used the word DOS, like we're using, that's very dated technology. Having someone manually input listing data is very dated. Like, I, 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 I'm, 
I would I would ask some questions about that. Um, and that's just again us looking out for for you guys during this whole process. Brian, one quick question, uh, just for Yes, you guys, if you guys left your contract term uh, early, you would have to buy out the remainder term of your contract. So that, that is how we do it. Everyone does that. Um, you know, everyone asks for a buyout, and I can send that to you guys when that might be uh, directly to you, uh, uh, Sarah, and let you know what, what, what that would entail. Okay. But the, we do require a, a full contract buyout. Thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, no, hey, wait, wait, I, I wait. I gotta do. I have to do this. I have to do this. Okay, so everybody's looking, right? Everybody can see my screen. Yes. Okay, a little joke for the end of the day. So, so this guy's a little worried about being able to sell this property. <laughs> all right well I, I really appreciate everybody sitting in and then you know carrie and sarah getting this going again guys we really appreciate your business no matter what way you you turn we're always going to be here five we've been in business since 1969 you know uh, i've been there for in SCR for 20 years whether you guys, whatever you guys do, we're always here to help you no matter what. Your business means more than you know. And I want to thank everybody for sitting on this presentation. If you have any questions at all, I'll even give you my direct email address. Please, like this comes right to my phone. Email me with anything that you have. And I can, even if it's a question about the system, and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you okay, thanks, guys. Everybody take care.